Zach, uh, we had Jared Capisi on the other day, and, and he said as a walk-on, one of his favorite things about the team is there's really no division between a walk-on or, or a scholarship guy. Is that something the leadership council talked about, or is that something that just kind of happened naturally with, with the program? I think, I think it's a natural thing for sure. I know it's something Kalani wants um, on the team. You know, I don't think you should ever be treated, you know, differently if you're a walk-on or scholarship guy. You know, I feel like your play and the, and the way you contribute to the team is, is how you're going to get on the field, whether you're paying, paying your way or, or you got your way paid for. And so, um, yeah, I'm happy for that guy. He's, uh, he's come a long way. Zach, uh, how have you managed and maybe uh, – navigated all the the national hype and accolades and praise that you've been getting what's describe how that's been for you and how you're navigating this yeah really just using it as confidence you know going into the next week and you know you don't read into it you know too much because it comes as fast as it goes right uh we've seen that before people love you one week and they hate you the next and so um we're grateful for where we are as a team everyone's contributed and everyone's bought in and um, our mentality as an offense, defense, and special teams is, is where it needs to be. And we're going to keep trying to get better every single week. And um, we're excited for the opportunity. And how would you describe your, your BYU experience to this point? I mean, you've faced ups and downs, uh, you know, where you had some tough losses last year. I went through some ups and downs as a freshman. Just maybe describe this, this BYU experience thus far for you. Yeah, it's been a, a remarkable uh, roller coaster, I'd say. You know, we had – um, you know, a good ending to a freshman season. And then, and then last year, a lot of potential, but, but not quite fulfilling what we were capable of doing. And then, and then this year, finally just putting it all together. And that's, you know, that's what happens when a team is, is building from, from the bottom, right? BYU kind of hit rock bottom there. And so, uh, you know, it's been super enjoyable. Uh, it's been a, a great time with the guys. You know, I'd say our connection on as a team is is better than it's ever been. I think that's a huge part of of why we're having success. We're, we're all just having fun together out here playing ball. Zach, I wanted to ask what it's like for you to go back and watch your own film because you've spoiled this with so many great throws and great plays that that when one is just slightly off or maybe not at the same standard, it's almost a surprise for those of us watching. What's that like for you when you go back and see maybe one that you're not as happy with? Yeah, you know, it's still frustrating for me. I know I can, um, you know, I personally feel like I can make any throw on the field. And, um, you know, when I do have a throw that's off or, you know, I, I make sure I credit those guys. You know, Isaac Isaac Rex made a great catch last game on a scramble drill and went down and caught a remarkable a remarkable catch. You know, it really wasn't a great throw. Um, I made I made sure to tell him that was a big time, a big time catch by him. And, um, you know, really, you know, it's it's not sitting there looking at looking at the big plays maybe that I did make, but but watching the ones I could improve on and get better at for the next week. And so uh, it's really a learning experience every week. I also wanted to ask just a lot of the players on this team, I mean, a lot of the positions rotate, even the offensive line had some rotation. You guys are competitors. You want to be out there on the field as much as you want. What's it like seeing the camaraderie that has to happen for that to work for the by committee and the rotations to, to work out? Yeah, you know, it's always a competition. You earn it in practice. You know, that's that's always what's so hard about so many so many opinions from outside people is it's like, oh, so-and-so should be here, so-and-so should be here. But you know what? The coaches, the players, we see it all in practice. We battle it out um, the entire year. You know, whether it's in the weight room is where it starts and then it translates to spring ball, fall camp, and, and then in the games. And so uh, this year it's been cool to see um, – different positions stepping up and different different guys stepping up in those positions and, and making plays. And uh, it's going to make everyone better on, on, on every asset of the ball. Okay, uh, we'll take a question from Brandon Marcello and then go to Norma Gonzalez, the Tribune, Jay Drew, the Desert News, and then Matt by Monte KSL. Hey, Zach, uh, Coach Grimes was uh, chatting with us earlier. And then I, he was jo maybe he was joking, maybe it's real. He said you were watching The Bachelorette last night. <laughs> when he was breaking down film i didn't realize you were a fan of the bachelorette yeah that's a you know that's a you know surprisingly i think a lot more people watch it than they'd, they'd admit it. you know i think a bunch of our coaches watch it i don't care what they say i know they watch it um i'm with me and, and my three roommates two of our main receivers at home watching it you know and so <laughs> there's a whole bunch of guys that watch it when grimy texted me he was he was text, texting me asking me what film i was watching and you know, I thought it'd be funny to give him the response when I'm actually watching The Bachelorette. And so uh, 
we we come to find out the next day in practice that a lot of a lot more people watched than he thought. He he also said on a more serious note, you know, he's he's been around a Heisman winner before, and obviously there's a lot of talk about Trevor Lawrence and and Mac Jones and other players, and I know a lot of people might be superstitious even to, to discuss it. But how do you think you compare to those type of quarterbacks, and what makes you different? Yeah, it's hard to say. I try not to compare myself. You know, I try to to focus on myself and things that I can improve. You know, those are those are great players, and they're they're all different in, in different aspects. They all got you know different teams, different receivers, different competition, and so you know, there's really nothing I could say that I, I do better or separate myself differently than them. You know, I really think that it kind of just if it's something that that people would like on film that that they feel like I I have an edge maybe or or something like that that they see on film. You know, that's really all it is, but. Um, you know, I really try not to compare myself to other people. Zach, I know you've already kind of talked about your relationship with Dax Milne, but what else can you tell me about him, how much that relationship means to you, and just how that helps you guys both on and off the field? Yeah, you know, it's not even just with Dax. You know, I love that guy, and I hang out with him. You know, Dax was the guy watching The Bachelorette with me last night. And so um, it was me, Braden, and Braden Cosper, and, and Dax Milne sitting on the couch, uh, hanging out and, you know, it's the relationship with all of those guys, you know, it's, you know, me and Gunner and um, in our neighborhood, we got, you know, majority of the guys on the team living with us, whether it's Mason Way, Carter, Carter Wheat lives right across the street, same with Isaac Rex, you know, linebackers with Drew Jensen, my brother, uh, right tackle Blake Freeland lives right up the street from me. So really our neighborhood is just, you know, we're full of that connection just because we all live right next to each other. We're all, we're all best friends. We, we love hanging out and doing stuff together. And did you ever think when you started playing against each other at eight years old that you would be playing um, alongside each other and throwing passes to each other at BYU? No, I didn't. I remember the conversation. I was younger and Dax was thinking about coming here and Braden Cosper was already committed here and I was committed to Boise State and I was trying to get them to decommit. I'm like, you don't want to go to BYU. Like, that's not where you guys want to be. And, you know, and. Braden, I remember Braden told me, he's like, dude, I promise you, like, wait till you, wait till you talk to Coach Kalani and you're going to be here at BYU. And uh, I guess I guess Kalani talked me into it. My turn, right? Yeah. Uh, Zach, I just want, what do you make of this? You're in the Heisman conversation. And, I mean, growing up, did you ever envision that would be happening to you? And just what do you make of all the talk and all the, the lists and all that that you're making? Yeah, you know, it's a dream. It's a blessing for sure. You know, I would say, I would say, honestly, it, it's a, I always tell the guys on the team this when they bring it up is it's really a team award, right? You know, no one's winning the Heisman if you're losing games. You know, if, if you're not having an O-line that's protecting for you to be able to, I mean, shoot, I haven't gotten hit all year. You know, if, if I don't have that time in the pocket, if I don't have receivers going up and high pointing balls and, you know, coming down with it or a defense making a stop after I, you know, fumble a snap on the 10 yard line and, and they jump on. If I don't have a defense that's stopping those guys on the 10, you know, I wouldn't be in that conversation. So I tell those guys all the time that, you know, it's really a reflection of our season so far as a team. And I think that we have that confidence and swagger. And so um, really it's, it's great to be part of it just because I think it's, I think it's a team award. Were you happen to be watching when they showed during the Georgia uh, Clemson game or the Georgia Alabama game where Trevor Lawrence and you were on the same screen? Were you having to be yeah, watching then? Yeah, I actually was. I was watching that game. Yeah, it's cool it popped up. What was your reaction, I was going to say? Um, you know, it's it's kind of just one of those things you'll never get used to. <laughs> you know, you pop up on the TV and you're like, whoa, that's weird. You know, why are they showing this in the Georgia Clemson game? Or, um, you know, so it's cool. Zach, what's, um, what's an, an, uh, an aspect of your game, an area of your game that, that you've been pleased with up to this point and maybe along those lines, uh, an area of your game that you're still actively working to improve? Yeah, I'd say our, our ability to land big shots this year and, and have a high completion percentage doing it. You know, I'd say that's a, that, that is, that is what separates a team to be a high scoring team, a high scoring offense is the ability to have explosive plays and then hit them at a high rate. And so, you know, that's something I've been pleased with this year. And, and again, that's, that's not me, you know, you got to have time, let guys getting down the field. And, and our receivers have done a remarkable job at making plays this year. And so, um, you know, the explosive plays, the yards per attempt um, is something I've been super happy with. Um, something I want to work on is 
um, you know, maybe a little better accuracy on my, my underneath throws, the ones that you get rushed on sometimes, just a little bit better placement, giving my guys the ability to run a little bit more out of a, out of a catch, give them a, a, a catchable ball so that they can, they can go and get yards off of. And along those lines, why do you think the offense has been uh, remarkably better at, at cashing in in the red zone this year? It was a huge focus since day one. You know, we focused a lot on red zone or on third downs last year. Um, we made that improvement. And then this year, you know, I wanted to say that, that last year we were 31 of 60 as far as scoring. And, you know, that, that, that's just not good enough. You know, we were, we were one of the top teams in the country as far as getting into the red zone. And it means nothing if you don't score. So that, that's always been a huge push for us. I remember even times in the off season where it's me and the receivers throwing routes. And normally, you know, you go wherever on the field, but there was times where it's like, hey, we, we got to work on scoring. Let's go in the red zone. Let's work on uh, completing balls inside the 20. And let's, let's get good at it because that's what we need to get better at this year. Hey, we'll take a question from uh, Mitch Harper, KSL. Yeah, Zach, uh, I've seen, you know, during your BYU career, you've worn a, like a bracelet that says, prove them wrong. Uh, why does that slogan or mantra kind of mean, what does that mean to you? Yeah, you know, my whole life, I feel like I've always come from the bottom. I've, I've, I've never been the guy that's had so many scholarship offers or was known as the big time high school uh, recruit or even when I first got into high school, you know, I was the fourth string quarterback my sophomore year at Corner Canyon. And so you know, it's kind of a motto I've kind of lived by my whole life. You know, I came here to BYU and no one expected me to play. And we had so many other quarterbacks in front of me and, you know, I got injured. No one expected me to come back from it. And so it's kind of, you know, it's not ever directed at one person. You know, it's kind of a mentality that I have that, you know, if, if people are going to doubt you, I'm going to use that as fire to, you know, fuel my fire and, uh, you know, prove everybody wrong and, and show people that I, I am capable of being able to fight through adversity and come back from things. And do you feel like this, you and this BYU team are, are proving maybe the doubters wrong to this point and what more are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, you know, I'd say we're on that path. I'd say we're not there yet, but we're heading in the right direction.